Popular images concerning African architecture tend to focus on traditional huts and sometimes even mud brick or adobe architecture from the Sahara region. Rarely do people associate stone architecture with Africa unless they're talking about Egypt, but many may be surprised to know that there exists an extensive, highly skilled stone architectural tradition coming out of Southern Africa. So today, we're going to be talking about some of the more well-known stone building architectural sites of Southern Africa. What up African world, it's Home Team here and welcome back to another video of African history, culture, and worldview. By supporting this channel on Patreon, you're helping in the creation of these videos and supporting this content. If you'd like access to full courses and sources, or you simply want to show your support, you may do so by clicking the Patreon link in the description box below. Let's start with perhaps the most famous stone ruins in Southern Africa. Great Zimbabwe is a stone ruin located in the southeastern region of present-day Zimbabwe. What's known as the Great Enclosure is the single largest stone structure below the Sahara. It's believed that the Shona people built these fantastic stone dwellings for their elites. Construction of the Great Enclosure and the Conical Tower is believed to have begun around the 12th century. What's so impressive about Great Zimbabwe is that the Africans in the region built the enclosure without the use of mortar, which is quite impressive. Also, the Shona people have an extensive history of building in stone, especially for people of status. There are around 300 known stone dwellings in and around the Zimbabwe Plateau, which goes to show that the people were skilled in this architectural style. The site was so impressive that when Portuguese visitors first arrived in the late 1500s, they immediately began to theorize that Africans could not have done this. Other visitors even began to claim that perhaps Arabs or ancient Mediterranean peoples built the structures, but genuine scholarship acknowledges the Shona as the builders. The great enclosure is made of an outer wall that is 120 feet in circumference with a height reaching as much as 80 feet. An inner wall runs beside the outer wall forming the narrow, long passage that leads to the conical tower. The conical tower is 33 feet high and 16 feet in diameter. Its purpose isn't really known, but many experts have theorized that it may have been a symbolic grain bin. Great Zimbabwe, however, was not at all the beginnings of stone architecture in the southern African region. Scholars suggest that Great Zimbabwe simply borrowed from an even older tradition at the historical site of Mapungubwe. Mapungubwe is believed to have flourished around 1075 and their long distance trade in gold, iron, copper, ivory, and jewelry afforded them much wealth. It's thought that the Mapungubwe rulers and religious elite occupied the hill as a direct result of growing hierarchical distinctions in Mapungubwe society, and the literal placement of different classes at the top or bottom of the hill obviously reflected symbolic status. Remains from the top of the hill include richly endowed burials and evidence of successive phases of building that incorporated more elaborate stone walling. The stone walled palace, if you will, of the ruler was centered on the summit. To the northwest of the palace are the graves and the residences of his royal wives. In essence, the elites of Mapungubwe were buried on a hilltop overlooking the kingdom. One of the more recognizable artifacts of Mapungubwe civilization is the famous golden rhino. Today, the golden rhino can be seen as a symbol of Mapungubwe's legacy of wealth and power. Our next stone architectural site are the Kami ruins. Kami was the capital of a southern African kingdom called Torwa that was founded in the 16th century after the capital of Great Zimbabwe was abandoned. The ruins at Kami are very unique and shows a similar but yet distinctive stone architectural style. The key features at Kami consisted of platforms on which houses were built and intricately patterned stone walls with various patterns have been observed. Kami shows a development and evolution in style concerning Southern African stone architecture. Its more important residents lived in a central group of buildings, with the hub being a hill topped with three platforms that formed a tiered structure. 
More ordinary residents lived in less substantial structures on the town's outskirts. Kami was a major center for trade, as indicated by the presence of goods such as pottery and glass beads, originating from the Indian Ocean Basin and even Europe. In exchange, the Kingdom of Tora supplied gold, copper, and ivory among other goods. Trade contacts were with Muslim merchants from the commercial towns of the Swahili coast or through intermediaries with Portuguese merchants operating in the southeast African interior. The stone ruins at Kami are such an excellent display of Southern Africa's rich stone building heritage. Well, I'm all out guys. If you like these videos and want to help in its continued production, consider supporting the home team on Patreon.com. The link is in the description box below. Know thyself. Remember your ancestors. Peace. Thank <laughs> you.